Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. I'm the mom and I do the movie reviews. And my goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can decide whether or not you wanna spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. So today, the movie I'm reviewing is called Mr. Monk's Last Case, a monk movie. This fun mystery with our favorite anxiety-filled detective is now playing on the Peacock channel. The rating is TV PG, and the film is an hour and 37 minutes long. My overall movie review mom grade is and A. Now, I readily admit that it could be because I'm biased. My husband and I have been fans of the Monk TV series for years, and so I was so excited to see that they've turned a reunion of sorts into a feature film. So let me give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked, things I didn't, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines and interesting lines, and recommendations for other films. All right, so in a nutshell, if you're a fan like I am of the Monk TV show, I think you're definitely gonna get a kick out of this reunion film directed by Randy Zisk. Writing credits go to Andy Breckman. So let me give you some tips for parents. I think, first of all, kids are going to be bored. They're not going to appreciate this fun reunion with characters because they were probably too young to watch it in the first place. A man contemplates suicide throughout the entire film. At the end of the movie, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline phone number is offered, which is 1-800-273-TALK. And even though the film is very lighthearted, I appreciated that Monk really struggled with anxiety and depression and the death of his wife and so many things like that. And so it was sort of a nice touch and appropriate for him and his character and for viewers who could relate to his character. Other uh, tips for parents are that a man dies in an accident and that there's also talk of murder. Now, I think all of his episodes had talk of murder, but I'm just trying to give you the heads up on the content. You can decide if you think your kids will be interested or if this content would be appropriate for them. So some of the themes that are illustrated very well are making a difference, finding purpose in your work, teamwork, closure, justice, family, never giving up, surrounding yourself with support, which Monk definitely did, and critical thinking and good analysis skills. So the list of things that I really like about this movie is long. First of all, Tony Shalhoub is so fantastic as the OCD Adrian Monk. I've loved him in any role that he's been, and he's really a chameleon in his roles and truly talented as an actor because he can play so many different characters. It's also so great seeing familiar faces and characters from Monk's longstanding popular TV show from over a decade ago. We get to see Melora Hardin, Ted Levine, Trailer Howard, Hector Elizondo, and Jason Gray Stanford. The film is definitely a look at the past characters that we love, but it perfectly fits in today's post-pandemic world of hand sanitizer and germ paranoia. We get to see Tony Shalhoub's wife in real life in the movie. She plays the editor, so keep your eyes open for her. Hector Elizondo had retired from TV and film, so Tony Shalhoub had to convince him to come out of retirement just to be in this movie and call back one of our favorite characters from the show. The movie definitely would not have been complete without him. There's a funny scene where Richard Kind plays twins in a funeral home. It's an important scene in two ways, pun intended. But no spoilers, just know that, pay attention, don't run to the bathroom during that scene. There's a surprising darkness to the story that makes this addition to the franchise somewhat unique. The movie was filmed in Ontario, Canada, a little fun fact for you. There are also plenty of Easter eggs that true fans are going to get a kick out of. 
The first scene in this movie features a stove and Monk's first assistant. Remember Sharona from the very first episode of the TV show. There's a Neil Diamond shout out, which I thought was cute. So I have a question for you, especially after you see this. Do you think this movie's goal could be to create a movie franchise with these characters or to spin off on another TV series or just continue the TV series? I am perfectly fine with either one. As I mentioned, I'm a fan and I get a kick out of this character. I absolutely loved the ending. Now, my husband was busy. He didn't have time to watch this movie. So I told him, not the whole story, but I told him how the film ended. And he said, oh, that sounds perfect. And I thought it was. So keep watching. Even when you hear that familiar end song, it's a jungle out there. Keep watching during that theme song uh, for a few other things. Now, with all of that praise, there were just a few things that I didn't like or thought could have been done better. For example, some scenes really belabor the point, such as when Monk struggles to decide whether or not to give the pharmacy delivery boy a tip. It's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and come on, you know, let's move on, we get it. Some people might think that this movie was just a lazy cash grab, but I disagree. I thought it was a fun stroll down memory lane and I didn't mind it at all. I really like the actress Melora Hardin, but I did not like the dress that they made her wear in every scene. It looked like it had been hanging for years in the back of some costume closet. And maybe it was, maybe if I watched the original movies or the original TV series, maybe that was the exact same dress. She's wearing a white dress, but it's kind of dingy and a little ratty and it didn't really flatter the actress as much as a different dress could have. I don't know, it just bugged me every time I'm like, she needs to iron that or put some bleach in it. I don't know. I wanted it to be really white and beautiful and magical. But anyway, in terms of the mystery in this movie, it is super easy to spot the bad guy. I thought that it would be a more complicated story since it is a feature film, but it kind of wasn't. And that surprised me because many times when I would watch the TV episodes, I couldn't always spot or figure out, you know, who done it. And that made it fun. And this one, I was like, huh, okay. I just assumed it would be bigger and better than what we had seen in the past. And ultimately, it's much less of a who done it than a how done it kind of a story. So whenever I watch movies, I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you so you can get a taste for the dialogue and the script writing ability. And so I've got some of them that I'll share with you right now, but you can find all of them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So <laughs> uh, here's a list of some of the funny things that I wrote down. So Molly, who's pointing out how everyone uses hand sanitizer, she says, look, everyone's you. And then Monk says, they're going to hate it. <laughs> and then Monk is saying something to someone and says, you'll thank me later while he's organizing the luggage by height. And then she says, why would I thank you? You're a stranger. And he says, you'll thank me for that too. <laughs> and in this movie, you really feel a lot of self-hatred and um, how he's just not happy with himself at all. He does it in a funny way, of course, but it, it kind of breaks your heart every time he says something like that. And then an interesting line that Mr. Monk says at one point is, everything makes sense eventually. And that's true, of course, but it's also this lesson that he learns, which is important. And I just thought it was really powerful. Now, as I was watching this movie, I instantly thought of three that I wanted to tell you about if you haven't already seen them. The first one is called Death on the Nile, and it's a great whodunit type of movie. I think it came out last year or the year before. You can watch my movie review of that one. And then another one is called Knives Out. That one just got so much praise for it, I think because it really handled 
uh, blending a variety of characters and, you know, the mystery and the intrigue with lots of comedy. And uh, I will cue that movie review up so you can watch that one after you finish watching this one, just because I thought it was so much fun. And then another one is just called Murder Mystery. It's goofy and funny um, and a mystery. And so you might get a kick out of that one as well. I've done video reviews on YouTube of all of those films. All right. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I hope if you watch this, you get a kick out of it. And when you get a minute, run over to Facebook where you can join our Movie Review Mom Facebook group. Catch in the next one. Bye for now.